was. So we're in Matthew chapter 4 this morning. Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to talk about following Jesus this morning. So I got this. You're probably wondering why I got a net around my pulpit. So I'll tell you that in a little bit. But there's a good chance I'm going to throw it on Jennifer or something. <laughs> but Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22, we see this in the scripture. So this is Jesus is just starting his public ministry. This is right after his baptism and his temptation. And he's getting ready to start his public ministry. This is by walking, while walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, casting nets into the sea. For they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them and said, immediately they left their boat and their father, and they followed Jesus. So Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee. He's going to start his public ministry, and instead of doing ministry on his own, he decides he's going to need 12 guys to help him in ministry. Most of you know that already. I want you to know this morning that you can't follow Jesus if you're still holding on to your net. I'm going to explain that a little bit further. You can't follow Jesus if you're still holding on to your net. So Jesus walks up to these guys and he says, come follow me. And some scholars over the years have taught and believed that Jesus probably had a prior relationship with them. So it wasn't such a shock to them. We don't really know. The scripture doesn't give us the detail. But we do know that in Jesus' day, it was not normal for a rabbi to walk around and call his own disciples. It actually didn't work that way. How it did work is if you were a young man and you wanted to be taught by a certain rabbi, you would go to that rabbi, and if you had the right credentials and background and education and potential, that rabbi could accept you as a student or he could reject you as a student. Um, rabbis didn't walk around picking their students. That wasn't something that happened normally. But Jesus goes and he finds these guys and he picks his own disciples. Which, so he's breaking a cultural norm here. Now what's incredible about this is Jesus' disciples, one of them, Peter, was married. The rest of these guys are grown men. They got a job. They fish for a living. These are blue-collar, hard-working kind of guys. These are not the kind of guys that anybody would choose to be their disciple, especially a rabbi. These are completely different than that. So I think it gives us a lot of hope this morning because Jesus didn't choose them because of who they were, but because of who they would become. See, Jesus looked at these two, these guys, these four guys in here in the start of the story, and he sees that they're fishermen. He knows that they're hardworking. They got a dirty labor kind of job. All the other rabbis in the area would count these guys out and say, nah, nah, it's not them. You know, they were kind of a group of really nobodies. But Jesus doesn't call them because of who they are. He calls them because of who they can become. And I believe that's exactly what Jesus is doing right now in the world around us, is when he calls each of us to salvation, he's not calling you because of who you are. He's calling you because of who you can become. It's not who you are in this moment, because honestly, when we all come to Jesus for the first time, most of us, majority of us, are a hot mess, right? You, you got some stuff in your life that you're working out. You got some sins. You got some hurts, hang-ups, whatever it is. I, I don't think, I've never actually met the person who comes to Jesus who's perfect. Usually you come to Jesus because you need a saving or things going on in your life. And, and Jesus accepts you not because Jennifer's a hot mess, but he knows who Jennifer's going to become, who he's working on, right? Amen, and we're grateful for that. So I think that gives us, in the modern area, in the modern day, that should give us a lot of hope because for Jesus' early disciples, the window of opportunity to be a disciple of rabbi closed a long time ago. They had no chance of becoming one of the famous religious guys' disciples. But Jesus chose them, which means the window of opportunity for you this morning to be a disciple of Jesus is still wide open. Jesus is still calling men and women to him because he sees the potential in you. And Jesus wants you to follow you. But I think there's, there's something that happens in the church nowadays, especially in the modern church, where most of us, we come to Jesus and we're in church on a Sunday morning and we feel a little guilty at the altar. We go to the altar. We, you might have said a sinner's prayer or something like that, you know, and, and you start claiming that you're following Jesus, but you don't really follow. Like, we, we don't get saved in Jesus to go live our life the way we've always lived it. We get saved in Jesus to go live a different life. We, go, we get saved for transformation. We get saved because Jesus knew who Naughty Bob was before he was a Christian, 
and he wants to transform me into more like himself. So we get saved for transformation, not to stay the same. But so many of us are living this, this Christian life where we're just the same. And year after year, you're like, man, I, I just don't feel that close to the Lord. I don't know what's going on. I can't kick this habit or that habit or this attitude or that attitude. Or, or you know, it's the same people like this. How many people this morning would say that they follow Jesus, but they're not in church? And they, and they treat church like it's optional. Even though the Bible says, do not let us give up in the habit of some in the habit of doing, Hebrews 10, 25. Still, people would say, well, I follow Jesus. But when you look at him, you're like, but you're not really following. Who are you following? Who, who is leading your life this morning? Jesus calling these guys in their response because when Jesus says, follow me, they understood that. There was something about Jesus standing on that seashore that they saw the potential in Jesus, that they just dropped their nets. They even dropped their father. They dropped everything. And they be, and be, and just start following Jesus around. And here's the deal. They didn't really know. They, they might have knew something about Jesus, but they didn't know what they knew after three years. They, and they just saw something in Jesus that said, this is what we're doing. And they dropped their nets. See, there has to be a change. See, when Jesus makes the invitation to follow me, that statement asking these men the same thing he's asking us today. To choose, it's to choose him. Jesus is saying, choose me. Choose me in your life. Choose me. See, we have this thing called free will, right? Anybody know what free will is? Free will is this little troublemaker in our lives, which means I can follow, but I can also choose not to follow. I, I could choose to do the right thing, but I often choose to do the wrong thing, and it just goes on and on like that. So Jesus doesn't force himself. He doesn't come up, he doesn't come up to you guys and say, you know what, Matt, you're going to follow me, and that's it. And you have no choice. He, he doesn't do that, amen? Jesus says, just follow me. Matt, it's just like the rest of us, you've got a choice. to say, okay, am I, am I going to follow Jesus or not? And when you follow Jesus, you realize that then there needs to be a change that takes place. See, we have the choice in following Jesus, and that doesn't mean I get saved and do things my way. It means I get saved and do things his way. It means this, my thoughts, my actions, my desires, my wishes either go my way or I surrender and follow his way. The bat, this is the battle we all face. It's like, who's in control? If I get up every single day and uh, I'm sleeping too late for church or uh, I'm not serving or I'm not, you know, I'm not reading my Bible or I'm not praying, I'm not doing all these kind of things, you're not, you're not really following Jesus. And most of us, we make excuses and say, oh, I'm too busy. I'm too tired. I'm too this, I'm too that, whatever it is. I'm like, you know what? I think this morning, if we could close our eyes and actually see Jesus, to see him in the forefront of our mind and him just saying, come follow me. How many of us are standing and say, but Jesus, I'm tired this morning. Oh, Jesus, you don't understand. Work has been crazy. I just don't got time to see Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you know, that's a great opportunity you're giving me, but I got this other thing that I have to do. You know, most of us, we wouldn't even dream of doing that, but we actually do do that in our day-to-day -day lives. My question is this morning, when you look at your priorities, who are you following? When you look at the way you're following Jesus, do you see transformation in your life? Do you see that, man, I am I'm walking with Jesus every day. You know what? I'm praying. Why? Because he did I'm getting alone with God in a quiet time. Why? Because Jesus did. And I'm like, if Jesus needs to get alone with God, maybe I need to get alone with God. So I'm spending time with God every day, and God is working on my heart and working in my life. And, you know, when I, when I read the Bible and I pray and I get into it, he actually speaks to me. I actually hear God's voice at times tell me what to do and how to do it and so on. I love when I'm praying for a sermon, and I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to preach? Monday morning I get up, blank piece of paper sitting on my desk. I kind of know what's coming, and I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to say? And all through that week while I'm praying and working on it, God speaks to my heart. And things just, just, he just does this amazing thing. Like following Jesus is, is every bit as much as spending time with him. But my thoughts, I need to think like Jesus. If I'm following, following Jesus, I want to think like Jesus. I want my actions to be like Jesus. I want my desires, the desire he wants. I want my way. In, and what it really is, is when I choose Jesus, I'm just saying, you know what, Lord, I surrender here, Lord, I surrender my nets. I surrender things in my life that just need to go. You know, these guys could not have been apostles if they stayed fishermen. 
That wasn't what God... See, sometimes we do things that we think are really good, and we have these habits in our life that are really good for us, but if the good thing you're doing is taking you away from the purpose God has for your life, that's not a good thing. And sometimes we get in that place where our career and our life and whatever it is, and we're, we're just living day by day. And you know what? You're living day by day, and mostly you're not bad people, right? So you're just living. You're just living day by day. You're, you're doing what you do. But if what you're doing every day takes you away from God's purpose for you, it's not the right thing to do. If you following yourself is bringing no change and transformation in your life, you have to think about, well, who am I following? Because when I follow Jesus, some things got to change. Right? Amen? Amen, amen, anybody got amen on that one? Because Jesus is this. He says, Jesus wants disciples who choose to follow him, and following him means becoming like him. It means we die to ourselves. Luke 9, 23 to 26 is this, and he said to him, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever saves his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does a man profit if he gains the whole world, yet loses and forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and ashamed of my words, of him the Son of Man will be shamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Jesus is saying, look, if you want to follow me, guys, if you want to follow me, you got to deny yourself. Some things just have to be let go of. Some things you can't take with you and follow Jesus. You, you can't, if you're, if you're going to be born again and you're going to receive that new life the gospel talks about, you can't bring your old life into your new life and carry that around with you. You, you got to make a change this morning. Yeah, that's, herein lies the problem is so many of us, we don't want to deny ourselves. Sometimes we don't want to admit that the greatest thing that's in our way of following Jesus is just myself. It's the way I think. It's the way I'm doing things. We, we don't want to admit that there's some things that I don't want to give up. So we, we, want, this, we want this watered-down version of Christianity that looks like this. Like, I follow Jesus, but I do what I want. And I live the way I want. I talk the way I want. I have these habits. I have all this kind of stuff that I know shouldn't be there. But, I just make, but because my excuse is so good, anybody in here good at making excuses if you need to? Right? Because your excuse is so good, you're like, uh, the Lord's going to be okay with it. It doesn't work that way, guys. Like, like, we need to make a decision who we're following. Who is it I'm following with my heart? Who's got control of my emotions and my attitude and the way I think? What, especially in the church nowadays. We could get this so wrong. Like, like, okay, anybody in here ever been hurt by church hurt? Like, the church has done something. What are your hands on? What are you... <laughs> <laughs> I've hurt my daughter. I apologize. <laughs> so many of us come to church, and what we do in church is we make church about people. Right? We make it about people. I'm here because of the people. And guess what? People are going to let you down. Like, people are people. People do dumb stuff. They, they hurt your feelings. They just, we're people. We make mistakes. I'm as guilty as anybody. But guess what? When I come to church, I'm coming to church because of who? Jesus. It's about him. He bought for he bought and died on the cross. The church belongs to him. When I come into this building, I'm coming in to have an expectation that I'm gonna spend time with Jesus, amen, and Jesus people. Which we gotta change that because if if, if I come to new beginnings, it's all about people, then every time people let me down, I can walk away. Right? Every time people let me down, well, I'm not following no more. I'm, I'm staying home from church. I'm quitting church, and this person let me down, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, man, you, you, you have forgotten that this thing's about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross and brought you into the church. Not me. Not somebody else. I hear people say, like, well, this person's chasing me out of church. I'm like, how's that possible? <laughs> Jesus bought and died on the cross, and you're in church because of your salvation. I don't read in the scripture where Jesus is like, today you're getting kicked out. I mean, unless you're in some sin we got to talk about. But we, we, sometimes we have this habit where instead of following Jesus faithfully, we find ourselves following people and other things, and that never works out. It never works out. we gotta, we got to make it. This is what we talk about in the Church of God when we say Jesus is the subject. I like to believe that everything we say and do here at New Beginnings is about Jesus. 
I love you guys, not because Penny is great or perfect or anything, because I love her like Jesus loves her. <laughs> I love all you guys that way. I love you because Jesus loves you, and I have no other choice but to love you. And, and you know what? I've been, I've been as guilty as anybody about being let down. Somebody doesn't follow through. Somebody hurts my feelings. Somebody, all that kind of, I mean, this is, it happens. But I can focus on all this stuff that people do wrong, or I can focus on what's right, and that's Jesus. And I can realize that each and every one of us is at a different place in our walk with Jesus. So if we're all following Jesus, right? Everybody here following Jesus this morning? Let me see your hand. Are you following Jesus? Oh, I'm praying for Connie back there. <laughs> Come on, are you following Jesus? Raise your hand. If we're following Jesus together, we've got to have grace with each other. If you're following Jesus and I'm following Jesus and we're headed in the same direction, that doesn't mean we're going to might be on the same, might be not be one step back or whatever it is, but we're going in the right direction, which means we've got to love each other as we're going through that. Jesus' disciples were going to come together, and they were going to have to build a relationship across a tax collector, talk to a religious zealot, talk about a government guy and blow the government guy up, different political ideologies and those two guys, the fishermen and so on. They all had different backgrounds and things, and they would come together and be Jesus' disciples because he called them. Not because they chose it for themselves, because Jesus said, come follow me, and they decided to follow him. And because they decided to follow him, they, they denied themselves and they put him first. Have you chosen Jesus this morning? <clears throat> it's not that being a fisherman was bad. I mean, Peter and these guys, I bet you they believed their whole lives like, this is all we're going to do. I'm a fisherman. I got the boat, got the nets, and how to do it. Anybody ever wake up and just feel like this is all I'm ever going to do? What's more? What's next? But even though Jesus saw them in their fishermen, Jesus saw potential in them. And I know it's true this morning that Jesus looks at you and he sees who you're meant to be. There's some potential inside of you. There's some potential inside of you for greatness, for, for doing more, and, and so on. So, so disciples who follow Jesus were, were called to follow him. And the same mission, and the mission is what? Mission is what? To seek and save the lost. It's to share our faith, to invite people. And this idea of God wanting a relationship where people follow him, if you've been reading along with us on Wednesday night, you know this is very much true because as we finished the book of Deuteronomy, we saw numerous times where God said, if you would just follow me, I'll bless you. If you would just follow me, love me with all your heart, mind, and soul, I will bless you. Deuteronomy 10, 12, and 13 says this, And now, Israel, what does the Lord God require of you but to fear the Lord God and to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I'm commanding you today for good. God wants a relationship with you where you would just say, I choose you, I'm going to follow and God says this, if you, Jesus says it, if you would follow me, I'm going to bless you. All right? Who needs a blessing this morning? Now, I know God, God, I could give good blessings. I could buy a grant to present all day long. It might be cool. He might enjoy it for a week. But what God could do in his life, in our lives, is something different. We're all good at giving good gifts, but the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Amen? Like the Lord wants to bless you for your obedience. But... Are you following? Following Jesus means we have to realign our lives. It means clearly I got to give up some things. I got to give up some things. I got to be willing to change some things. For these fishermen, they had to give up the very thing they loved. They had to give up their identity. They had to give up their purpose. They had to drop their nets and follow Jesus. They had to align their lives with him. They were making a change. They understood that following Jesus meant I couldn't take it with me. Something needed to happen. And Jesus tells him this. Jesus says, look, guys, I will make you. It wasn't making a decision to follow Jesus means you got it all figured out. Making a decision to follow Jesus means you're going to let him make you over. Right? You're going to let Jesus make you over. You're going to let Jesus begin to work on you. And Jesus does this incredible thing because he begins working on your heart. Anybody like those makeover shows? I'm telling you... <laughs> We had Ike and Amy over yesterday. We were wrapping up their premarital stuff, and yet the bathroom in our house always comes up. Everybody goes in there and says, man, you got to get that done. I'm like, no kidding. <laughs> but you know what? Rami and I, man, I'm telling you, we, we watched. She's gone down in Cerrito over here, and somebody built a farmhouse. Anybody see that across from Subway? It looks like it came out of that Chip and JoJo TV show. It's white, black tin roof. It's got the shiplap, and it, it's a beautiful house. 
my wife's like walking around the parsonage like, you know, Bob, if we knock out this wall, <laughs> you know, if we get a black tin roof and we whitewash the brick and we change the pillars on the porch, Bob, and hey, Bob, what happens if we would put a porch around the side of the building? And I'm like, I'm not sure Eric would like that because it would be in his yard. And, and like, we, <laughs> you get those ideas, and, like, and then you're looking at the bathroom like, you know what, I could think, I know this. I could go in there with a hammer and break down all the walls and make a big old mess. I could, I could do that, right? I could do that. Not putting it back together and making it look like something. <laughs> I've never done that before. It'd be mean. But see, we, we understand that. And what does God want to make over in your life this morning? Because here's the deal. You can't do it on your own. So if your heart needs a makeover this morning, your heart is just, you're hurting, you're going through something, you need Jesus to fix that. And Jesus will only fix that if you just choose him and start following. Because when you follow Jesus, he begins to make you into who he knows you're supposed to be. Imagine that this morning. I, I pray for this this morning. I, I say, God, let me look out and just look at the church and see who they're supposed to be. God, who is it this morning that Katie is supposed to be, or Alan, or, or my Angie, or Earl, or anybody? Say, Lord, who is it that when Jesus sees you, he sees the potential inside of you. He sees the fact that you can follow and he can use you and you're meant to do great things. Will you let the Lord make you over? Because the Lord can't make over what you're fighting. You ever want to, some of you, you playing tug of war with the Lord because he's trying to take this thing out of your life. You're like, no, Lord, you can't have it, Lord. And Jesus is like, if you don't give it to me, I can't make you over. I can't make you over. So he says, I'll make you this morning. Who do you believe you are this morning? How many in the church would say, man, you, you've kind of just settled for things the way they are. And yet Jesus wants to do so much more in your life if you would follow. I believe Jesus used their talents. He saw their talents as fishermen because he wants to use your talents too. What is it that's inside of you this morning that Jesus wants to use for his kingdom? The gift you have, the talent you have, the the passion you have to do something. And what is it? What is it inside of you? The statement I will make to you shows you that Jesus has plans for you because when he says, I will make you, Jesus is saying, I'm not just going to let you follow me, but Jesus, I'm going to do a work in your life. This is good news for us because if that window's still open, that means Jesus wants you to follow him and he wants to do something in your life. How many of us this morning need a healing from our emotions? What if you got a healing from your emotions? How many of us need healing in our relationships, our church church, or whatever it is? And Jesus is like, he wants to do it, but he wants you to follow. How many of us have something that we're addicted to or something that we should not be doing, that we, we can't seem to find a victory? And the Lord's like, would you just follow? Would you just begin to follow? Would you get up every day and just begin to follow Jesus? See, Matthew 4.20 says this. It says, immediately they dropped their nuts. Immediately, they dropped their nets and they followed Jesus. Immediate means they did it right away. What is it this morning in your life that you're holding on to that you need to drop? What is it in your life this morning? Anybody know, anybody know what this is? It's a fishing net. This net this morning represents your life, my life. This net represents all your hurts and your hang-ups, your addictions and your problems. And it represents who you think you are, not who the Lord knows you are. It represents the very things that you're supposed to let go of. And the problem with so many of us in the church is we're walking around trying to follow Jesus, and we're all caught up. We're caught up. You know, if I asked Jennifer to pull this on me, she could drag me anywhere because I'm caught up. And there's things in my life that I'm wearing, I'm hanging on to. Like The Lord's like, no, Bob, you have to get rid of that if you're going to follow me. But I'm like, Lord, that's uncomfortable. No, Bob, you have to get rid of that if you're going to follow me. What is it in your life this morning that needs you need to get rid of it? You need to get rid of it. You, you, you need to stop holding on to it because the more you hold on to it, the less you follow Jesus, the more it takes you away from Jesus. What is it this morning? The Lord is saying to you, come follow me. 
And you need to immediately, now this morning, you need to drop something in your life because you weren't meant to have it and you're not supposed to be carrying it, but for some reason you haven't given it up. What is it that's on your heart this morning? What is it, seriously? What is it? I know we all got something. What is it this morning? Here, Jennifer, I'm going to pass this around. Here's your net, sister. What is it you're supposed to get rid of this morning? Get it, pass it on. When you're ready to get rid of it, you give it to somebody else. You can toss it. <laughs> what is it, Greg, this morning that the Lord wants you to give up so you can follow him? <laughs> Kingston's like, I'm ready to toss it. Go ahead, toss it back there. Throw it at Corey. Throw it at Carolyn. <laughs> Come on, Corey. Carolyn, all you guys back there, what is it this morning that you need to give up so you can be more faithful in following Jesus? What is it? What's in your heart that's not supposed to be there? A relationship. Ellen and Katie, come on, I know you guys. What is it this morning that needs to go? (laughs) Penny, what is it this morning that you and Guy need to give up so you can be more faithful to Jesus? What is it this morning, guys? That's what it's about. Jesus said, Jesus said, go follow me. And the disciples had the right response because what repentance means is repentance means to change your direction. So they understood that following Jesus meant that they were going to drop that net and get rid of that net. And they dropped their fishing net, which means they dropped their identity, they dropped their careers, they dropped who they are, they dropped everything and they say yes to Jesus. You can't follow Jesus this morning if you're still holding on to your net. What is it, Matt and Angie, that you guys need to let go of so you can follow Jesus more faithfully? You know what Jesus is this in Luke 14, 33? Listen to these words. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all, look at this scripture this morning. Therefore, any of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. You cannot carry your nuts and follow Jesus. You have to drop them. And you got to renounce it, which means i got to confess it. If, 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 if the thing that's holding me back from Jesus is my emotions, and I need to go to God and say, God, I need you to heal my emotions. If it's my checkbook, some of you, it's your checkbook. You're not your checkbook this morning. You know God wants you to be faithful with your finances, but you're holding on to stuff that's not yours. You're, you're trying to get a blessing on your own, and the Lord says if you give to him, you'll get a blessing. Some of you, it's your sleep. <laughs> How many people tell me on Sunday morning, oh, pastor, I couldn't get up for church this morning because I was tired. <sighs> tired? <laughs> I'm tired too, but I'm tired of excuses. Like, will you renounce everything and follow Jesus? Will you renounce? Can you renounce? These are not my words. I'm just saying what Jesus says. And look at Peter says this in Mark 10, 28 to 30. He says this, and Peter began to say to him, See, Lord, like Peter's trying to justify himself here. See, Lord, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who would not receive a hundredfold now in this time. You get that this morning? Peter was like, man, Lord, we left everything for you. They did. The 12 disciples left everything and spent three years following Jesus. They, they got rid of everything. They gave up their businesses, their family. They, they gave everything for Jesus. And Peter's like, but Lord, see what we did? And Lord said, guess what? You're going to receive a hundredfold blessing because you did it. Man, I want a blessing. Amen. And then he goes on to say, Mothers and brothers and lands and persecutions in this age, and then he receive eternal life. You can't get into heaven carrying your nets either. You can't get in it. You were not going to stand on judgment day carrying your baggage into heaven. It doesn't work that way. Either you're going to repent of your sins and cast off all your baggage, renounce all you have, and choose to follow Jesus, or you got an issue. How many of you guys this morning, man, you've been following Jesus, holding on to your nets? You've been holding on to your nuts. Maybe it's another person, a relationship, whatever it is. We're going to take communion this morning. You can't take communion holding on to your nuts because the Bible says examine yourself. 1 Corinthians 11 says examine yourself. Make sure that you've chose Jesus. See, I've made that decision years ago. I won't let anything come between me and my relationship with God. 
because he's that amazing. And I think that's why I feel as blessed as I do. There's not a week in the world where I don't feel blessed. God's always taking care of stuff. He just does the most amazing things all the time. The other day, I just got a check in the mail. We were a little short, and a check comes in the mail, and it's the right amount again. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know how you keep doing this to me, but checks just come right when I need them. I mean, that's because we're faithful, I believe. It's time for us to recommit ourselves to following Jesus, amen, and to do it in a serious way. You can't follow Jesus if you're still carrying your nets. You can't. You can't. And there's something in each of our lives that we're holding on to, man. For me, it was my weight, making excuses of my weight. Now I'm trying to do something about it, and the doctor's saying it's working, but I'm trying, and it's not easy because I'm telling you, man, that dang Austin's ice cream. <laughs> I had to delete him off of Facebook, man. I'm like, fluff or nutter. I'm like, fluff or nutter, man. And now the pumpkin ice cream and all that's coming out, and I'm like, man, I'm not supposed to eat that, but I want some more. I'm like, the devil tempting me. <laughs> but you know what? You got to make the right choice every day. Make the right choice. I want you this morning, before you take communion, to examine yourself. If you got a net in your life, you can physically bring me that back up here, Jess. I'm about to tie Jessica up in this net. Church hurts. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up there. So if you need to cast that off a few more times this morning, go ahead and do that. But take a few moments now to examine yourself. Just close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes for a second. I want you to picture Jesus standing in front of you. And I want you just to look at him with his arms stretched out saying, follow me. He's looking at you right now saying, follow me. And I want you to think about how your response to that has been. What is it that you've been holding on to that he's like, you got to drop it. And picture yourself right now dropping whatever that is. Okay, Lord. And then saying yes to him. And as you say yes to Jesus this morning, imagine a smile that comes over his face. Imagine that. I can imagine this morning that if you're saying yes to Jesus in your heart, I'm telling you the smile on his face has to be radiant. It's got to be beautiful. There's nothing like you've ever seen before. The Lord is pleased with you when you choose him. And maybe this morning you need to open your heart and say, Lord, you need to make me over a little bit. I picked up some baggage and junk along the way. It's time for that to be gone. Whatever it is this morning, I just want you to just spend a few moments now with Jesus personally. Lord, take these things away from me that I shouldn't have. Lord, heal this relationship that's making me struggle. Lord, help me to trust you more than I trust people. Lord, help me to choose you over the world around me, because what good is it if me and my kids gain the whole world by doing every activity in the world, but we got no time for you? You're just losing yourself. God, we pray this morning. God, we pray that Jesus, we want to choose you. We want to open our hearts and choose you. We want it to be all about you. Lord, I pray this morning as I start this Matthew series that you would above all bring some healing into this church, some healing of some hearts and some healing of some relationships. Lord, would you help us to release the nets that we're not meant to hold, the nets that have been entangling us and keeping us captive, Lord. Would you free those chains? Would you free those bonds? Lord, set us free in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to choose to follow you because above all, that's what you're asking for. Above all, if the gospel is going to spread in our community, it's only going to spread when we choose to follow Jesus. And Lord, we want to follow you. So Lord, I pray this morning for some healings in the room, some heart healing, relationship healing. Lord, I pray for some disciples in the room this morning to get fired up for you, that this week they're going to ask, how can I be more faithful? And they're going to do it, and you're going to be with them. Lord, I pray as we take communion this morning that we remember that your body was broken for us, Jesus. That, Jesus, you didn't care about who we were. It's who you know we can be. It's our potential that you see. And, Lord, you died on the cross for our potential, for, for who you knew we could become. Lord, you, you spilled your blood on that cross for our lives and the forgiveness of our sins. And, and not so that we could be forgiven of our sins and just live the same old life over and over again. But, Jesus, you died for our transformation. Jesus, you died so we could receive a new beginning. Lord, I pray this morning that we would choose that for ourselves and we would choose you. Lord, help us to start dying to ourselves so that we would follow you faithfully because, Lord, that's really what you want. So above all, we pray this morning, Jesus, for you to take control in our lives. If anybody's praying this with me, raise your hand. Jesus, 
Raise your hand. Jesus, I want you to take control of my life. Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior and help me to drop my nets. Set me free, Jesus, in your name so that I can live for you this as fully and as completely as I can. Lord, take this addiction away from me. Take this problem, this relationship, this hurt, this hangout, whatever. Lord, I, Lord, we pray that you would take it away. So, Lord, I have nothing between you and me, Lord, so that we could follow you faithfully. Lord, we thank you for the work that you're doing in our lives. Lord, come and make us over. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.